Now, to anyone outside the world of commercial vehicles, the name Beverly Bell might not mean anything. But to anyone who does work in the industry, Mrs. Bell will be known as a very important and very influential person. Yeah, she's the traffic commissioner. I mean, just to put it in perspective, those that are not into the truck industry, what we have to do is when we run, go to run a truck, you've got to apply to the traffic commissioner to get a license to run a truck called an operator's license. So Mrs. Bell and her team also uh, control this, the licenses. So if she says, yes, you can have a license and you can, and if she says, no, you can't, you can't. And what happens, you might see them along the road, things like the highways agency, the police, despite what people might think, the trucks are very well regulated and they might pull you up, they'll check whether you've got the driver's got the right license, they'll check whether you're overloaded and things like that. Now, if some of these things come to, to light that you're, just, you, you're not doing the right job, then they'll tell the traffic commissioner. And when your license comes up for renewal or even some sometimes earlier, then she'll say, yes, you can have your license, or no, you can't. So literally, without the license, you cannot operate in the UK. So a very important person. Well, recently, Mrs Bell was kind enough to grant Truck World TV an interview, and Tim went along to meet her. Thanks, first of all, Mrs Bell, for giving the opportunity to talk to you. Uh, can you explain what the role of the traffic commissioner is? We regulate the commercial vehicle industry, buses, lorries and coaches. We're there to make sure that when lorries are on the road that they're safe and that the drivers who are driving them are also safe. Um, we also regulate drivers on behalf of the Secretary of State and if they don't act appropriately then they come and see us at a hearing. If operators aren't operating properly then they come and see us at a hearing and we can take action against their licence. In October, you published the revised uh, statutory guidance regarding the operator's licence. What's yes. been the reaction of that? As always, the industry has responded in a positive manner. Those documents are quite legal in their approach, and I think for the first time what they've done is set out a comprehensive review of the sorts of factors that commissioners take into account. What I'm much more interested in is sending a very clear message to the industry and those that use the industry that commissioners are there to regulate in a very practical manner, making operators do what's expected of them rather than having very detailed court hearings, uh, which can sometimes be a little bit too complex. What are the challenges facing the road transport safety at the moment? How do you feel, do you, how do you think we can improve the safety, both from the driver, a driver's point of view, and also, more importantly, the operator's point of view as well? We're currently in a very difficult economic climate and it can be very tempting for some operators to think they can cut corners, either get a little bit more out of the driver or get a little bit more out of their vehicle. We're here working with VOSA to make sure that operators don't cut those corners and to make sure that they're competing fairly. There's a cost to compliance and some operators think that it's cheaper if they don't comply. In fact, that's false economy. Much better to make sure the fleet's in tip-top condition Nothing more um, annoying for an operator than to be stopped by VOSA and parked up at the side of the road. If the vehicles are kept safe, then there's no difficulty and they can deliver uh, their, to their customers on time. How, have, how has your job changed over the years? Has, that, uh, has it changed? I'd like to think my job hasn't changed. I'd like to think that my job is very much the same as when I was appointed in 2000. But I think the industry's changed. I think the industry's responded very positively to the work that the traffic commissioners have been doing. We've had our modernising agenda uh, a few years ago and we're looking at doing that again. We're always looking at how we can modernise, how we can regulate more effectively. I think the challenges for the operators are that as we live in a very fast moving society and people expect things now, especially with the the advent of the internet that operators have got to make sure that they can get the compliance right so that they can deliver to the customer properly it's literally keeping the wheels of industry turning driver CPC mm. we're a year less than a year away or nine months away with September next year yes what I hear lots of things that we haven't got enough drivers there's going to be chaos happening uh, what's your view and people are saying you're going to put the time back what's what's your view on driver CPC what's happening again okay, there's lots of questions in there yeah of course it won't be chaos British transport industry commercial vehicle industry does a fabulous job in delivering to GBPLC there will be some drivers who won't have completed their training 
those uh, cases may be referred to traffic commissioners and where necessary we can take action. Um, the message has gone out very clearly, very loudly to all operators to invest in driver CPC. See it as an opportunity to invest in the drivers who work for you. Is the date likely to be put back in GB? No, the date's already been and gone for buses and coaches. There's no reason to think that it should change as far as lorries are concerned. Time for a quick break now, but when we come back we've got Tim's road test of the new Volvo FH and also we'll be looking at the debate surrounding driver CPC. See you soon. <laughs>